So I was looking around at all of the e-waste I've accumulated over the years, and I thought to myself, huh, all of these are Windows machines. I guess I'm just too poor to have a Mac. But at that moment, I had the best or maybe worst idea pop into my head. Maybe I can have a Mac and still be broke. Now the first step in my journey to becoming a poor Mac owner is obtaining a copy of Mac OS. And how do I do this? Well, I torrent, I mean, legally download it from an undisclosed source. Please don't kill me from beyond the grave, Mr. Jobs. We're gonna be installing Mac OS Big Sur, well, because the machine that we're installing this on is a Big Sur himself. It's mainly just because I didn't want to deal with the bugs that the newer version of Mac OS can cause. Now, we must consult the overlords of Hackintoshing. Dortania's Open Core Install Guide. Now, these guys are saints in the space because they've documented what seems like an infinite amount of hardware possibilities to account for. So I'm gonna go through all this boring stuff here and I'll see you guys when I have this USB drive done. All right, this USB has been infused with the Windows user's worst nightmare and we're gonna make Steve Jobs Jobs rolling his grave one last time. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Lick my balls. At first I had issues even getting the computer to recognize the USB or load the bootloader. But then I stumbled upon Olorilla, which offers pre-made EFI folders for all the supported CPU architectures. And this seemed like a good idea at the time, but I was sorely disappointed when I found out that it was just full of ads and doesn't really work. And with the Olorilla files, I got about this far and the only option was to just boot into Windows. At this point, I was thinking to myself, ah, I guess I'll just remain a Macless loser and also still poor. The sad man I was kept trying to search for an answer and was getting nowhere. Until, someone else has had to have installed Mac OS on one of these computers before. I searched to see if anyone else has attempted or even wanted to try this with an old ass HP G2, and to my surprise, they did. I found this GitHub repo from someone who's already Hackintosh one of these computers, so naturally, I stole their EFI folder. I really do appreciate it because I don't install Mac OS on very many devices, so I'm a total noob at this. I mean, hell, I even had to reach out to Matt KC of all people to get my laptop working with Mac OS. But I eventually turned to Reddit, where I was promptly answered by no one. So I went back to the drawing board, tweaking and trying and tweaking and trying again until finally, after everything I've been through and the days wasted trying to get this to work, here it is in all of its beautiful Apple glory, the zero dollar iMac. Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally in Mac OS. Some things don't work like the Wi-Fi, so I'm not actually able to download anything or use online apps unless I plug in an ethernet cable because that actually does work, but hey, at least it's somewhat working. I had to plug in this external display with a display port cable because the drivers that I have in my EFI folder don't entirely work with the integrated graphics on the HP Pro 1 G2. Also, the sleep feature doesn't fully work, so I just turned that feature off or else I'd have to reboot every time it goes to sleep. But there you have it, Mac OS on an HP computer, a free iMac. Now, would I recommend Hackintoshing? Well, I mean, if you like projects that are a pain in the ass and take multiple days to get working, then yes. But in all seriousness, I had a lot of fun doing this and making this video, and I put a lot of time and effort into this video. So if you guys wouldn't mind leaving a like and possibly even subscribing, that would help me out a ton, and I would really appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video. With the rain.